Welcome to the Coaches Show. That's Preston Ingram, the head men's basketball coach here at Missouri Baptist. And uh, Coach, 12-12 and 12 on the season, had a little bit of a rough week, uh, losses to CBC and to Williams Baptist. Let's talk a little bit about that uh, CBC game. Uh, you guys battled back hard in the second half, I think down by as many as 15, mm -hmm. came back out within one and then didn't score for the last 256 of the game. So yep. kind of break that whole thing down for me a little well, bit. Well, I guess we got to talk about these back-to-back -back home losses again, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the first time in a yeah. long time, yeah. or ever, I guess. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's in my first year, but um, our last three minutes wasn't very good. Uh, we had too many turnovers, too many costly turnovers, uh, too many unfortunate plays that uh, didn't go our way and that we didn't make, and uh, just lack of discipline and lack of understanding the structure of what it is that we need to do to win. Um, but that wasn't started then, it started, you know, months prior. And so, uh, something that we got to get fixed if we're going to win <clears throat> big, big games that have a lot of pressure, a lot of intensity, a lot of things riding on. Um, unfortunately, we don't do those games very well. Um, that's one thing I've kind of talked to our team about is that we got to handle pressures better. We got to do pressures better with pressures and, um, and how we're going to handle that adversity during that time. And a lot of that comes in with trust. A lot of that comes into value of each other. And that also comes into uh, the discipline, the structure of what it is that we're wanting to do from our staff all the way down. Um, starting with me. And, and I've got to be better in making sure that we're putting our players in better positions to be able to play. But then once we get our players in that position, our players got to be doing a good enough job to be able to buy into the brotherhood of what it is what we want to do too. And, uh, it's but even the last three minutes, <clears throat> I mean, we had way too many turnovers. I think we had like 21, 22 turnovers, something like that. I mean, that's just and way like too many. Three in the last two and a half minutes. Yeah, you know? and and bad, un, you know, normal shots for us, undisciplined shots for us, and something that we just can't do. And so there were just too many factors that went into that play that uh, that I thought that just didn't go our way. Then you followed up on Saturday uh, against Williams Baptist, and that I wish I had a better word, but that game just felt weird. Like something just felt off no. with the team through the entire, you know, it's like, and, and part of it was, you know, we talked about after the game, Ben Keaton got hot in the second mm -hmm. half. So every time you guys, you know, started to inch a little closer, he would hit a three or a couple of them in a row and just kind of kill the momentum. But it seemed like something was just missing off the jump yeah. in that game. It was just off. Well, you know, so our, <clears throat> our last three minutes of the uh, of the CBC game was terrible. Our first three and a half minutes of the Willing Baptist games was terrible. Mm -hmm. I thought we got off to a rough start. I mean, we had some open shots, but we missed them. Um, you know, and, and and then again, we were just kind of playing with lack of emotion, um, you know, and, and lack of purpose, I guess you can say. Um, and that's that's the unfortunate part and the frustrating thing for me is that our, our drive and our purpose and our determinations aren't where I would like them to be at. And, and I guess that's my fault because I've got to, we got to get players to do be able to do that and we got to get the players in the right seats to be able to do that and then you know we, I've got to do a better job of, of, of leading um, to make sure that our players are going in the right positions that we want to do and that's exiting on and off the floor our bish decor um, our players responses um, uh, uh, you know our players engagements understanding the purposes of practice and having value of value of something that's thing, one thing I think I talked about way too much this year is, is having value of value and so but, you know, to speak on behalf of Ben Keaton, um, you know, it's, it's uh, I will say this from a, from a fan standpoint, it was exciting to be able to see him back being him right. again with the young circumstance of what happened here last year when he was at Lion. Um, seeing the injury, seeing the way the foot was, um, obviously we had a, I don't know, 40 minute delay, I guess it was last right. year here. Uh, to be able to see him, uh, unfortunately on us, but here, uh, go off the way he did in the second half um, as a fan of just the game. Right. Um, and I think he's a tremendous kid. Uh, I, was, I was happy to see him back because he's been struggling in, 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 the, in there in the conference play. Uh, to be able to see him go off the way that he did, you know, I, 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 um, <clears throat> I got to applaud him for that and just be able to see him get back because it could have been detrimental with the way the foot right, was. Right. Um, debate to see him go back off. So, uh, you know, I got to take my hat off to, to Ben for uh, putting the performance up that he did. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just based off of, you know, what you've already shared with us during the interview, it seems like you're feeling that the issues with the team go a little deeper than just losing a game to CBC 
and Williams Baptist. You know, uh, sure. you know, talking about the culture of the team and the personnel and things like that. Talk a little bit more about that. Like, yeah. You know. Well, it just you know from from top to bottom. You know, and, you know, we talked about uh, the brotherhood and the buy-in process of all great teams have to have a certain desire of understanding roles um, and understanding what's needed from them. And sometimes selfishly, you got to put yourself aside. And it doesn't matter. You got to be an all-star in your own role. You know, I mean, like, you know, Carlos Boozer with, with Duke the other day was just talking about that. Um, and, you know, that's that's one thing about it. I mean, you talk about Carlos Boozer is one of the top college basketball players ever and right. one of the best players to come out of Duke. Right. But he was not the best player on his team. Um, he he had to buy into a cultural role. Uh, Jason Williams was, this, was the dude. Mm -hmm. And then you had Duhon, Chris Duhon. Mm -hmm. And Chris Duhon was a <clears throat> phenomenal college basketball player was just a subpar average and minimal NBA guy. But you got to be able to buy into your role for success and be able to buy into what the seat that is needed for that purpose and that desire of what it is. And that's one thing that I think we've been struggling with is buy into the purpose of the reason to roll and, and not being so much caught up about statistical or just to say that this guy or that guy is getting certain shots, but instead just buy into the purpose of what it is that we're needing us to do to be able to win. And that's from myself, that's from our staff, that's from our support staff, that's from our players, that's from our support players, our red shirt guys, um, our external support staff that comes over and helps us out. Very much appreciative, but there's certain things that have to be able to come in in line for us to be able to be successful. And, um, you know, I'm hoping, I don't know if we can get that finished, fixed in the week mm -hmm. before we get ready to play on Saturday, <clears throat> but we got five, six days here to be able to try to get it figured out. And uh, and, and it's going to be one way or another. Either, either we can still find success in this season or we're not going to find success in this season. At the end of the day, regardless if we win the league, we know this last year. You know, we go 16-1 and one in league play. Uh, yeah, I think going into the conference tournament, I think we're 23-5 and five maybe. Um, you still got to be able to win the conference tournament if you're going to win the other national tournament. And, you know, if Columbia right now is in the driver's seat, but if they stub their toe, they still have to win. Even if they went out, they have to win the conference tournament because they're not going to get in the national tournament based off of what they've done so far. Um, and if so, I'm probably calling uh, Bird on that one uh, if that happens because of what we did last year. But at the end of the day, you still got to put yourself in the driver's seat. You're still going to be able to win a tough, tough task, and you're going to have to be able to come together at some point to see who can win the conference tournament. And I think that's still up for grabs. Yeah, and it's, it's really all about, I mean, the regular season for any team now in the A and C, the way it's kind of shaked out is, you know, you're really just playing for a seed in the tournaments right. or home <clears throat> games, mm -hmm. you know? And if you can get three home games, like it, you know, Columbia's in the driver's seat for that right now, but really it's just about winning basketball games. No you doubt. Know? Um, because of the losses to CBC and Williams Baptist, you guys dropped. Technically, you're still in second. You're one win up on uh, Williams Baptist and CBC, and you don't control your own destiny anymore like you did maybe a week ago, right. kind of relying on the kindness and the efforts of others. Uh, CBC and Williams Baptist do have to play each other, so that helps you guys out a little bit. But we we're talking about this before uh, you know the interview started. Uh, you know, if we want to move up to number two and even have a chance at number one, we're big fans of the Harrisville Hornets right now because they play all three teams that you guys and you guys just have them in your last game here at home, uh, February 16th. But I believe Woods also might also yeah, that's too. That's true. That's true. And yeah. um, and Woods gets a lot of them at Woods, yeah, uh, which is a tough place to play. You know, and we went in there shorthanded uh, and and played well and and kind of held held our own on that part, but. You know, there's a lot of the scenarios back and forth and right. so many different things. And for us right now, you know, we got to get in postseason plays about momentum and about who's playing well in tournament time. To win a conference outright, that's longevity of culture and overall spectrum of everydayness. Like that's a that's a that's the marathon, right? <clears throat> Those are great, very good teams or sometimes great teams. You don't have to be great to win a three-game tournament. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you get a national tournament, it's not the best team all year that's won it. Last year, I guess it proved this point, last year with Loyola, um, because they were just more dominant and more bought in. Um, but to win a five-game tournament or a three-game tournament as such as what we're in right now, or getting ready to go into right now, we've, no, we've seen anybody can go and get beat by anybody right now. Mm -hmm. Lion goes to Columbia and beats Columbia. Um, Harris Stowe should have beat Columbia 
beat us and beat CBC in a three game stint right at home um, and goes two and one in that stint. Um, you know, obviously we're segmented to getting beat at home in which we haven't been up until this year getting beat at home. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things right now that it's a, still a toss up. Um, right now, I think playing the best basketball is probably Columbia. Uh, I think CBC is playing the second best basketball. Um, their score at Columbia was the exact same score we had here, 71-61. I don't know the ironic of that, but we just got to get, we got to work on ourselves. We got to be able to get better and, 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 and we got to be able to figure out what it is that we're going to do and what success we want to be able to find out this year. No. Quickly, what's this week look like? You guys are off, you know, Thursday. You're off all week until Saturday. How do you kind of manage that right now with kind of where the team is mentally and physically? Well, we're off today. Uh, we was going to watch film today, but with the way the weather is and the roads, I, I don't really care to be able to get it back in here late uh, to be able to watch film. We was going to try to do it this morning, but it was just too much. And so, plus also, too, we need to get some health. Uh, Hardy obviously took a nasty fall at the end of the game. It was unfortunate with his ankle. Uh, Brevin's been dealing with a knee injury. Nico's been dealing with a knee injury. Uh, Tyrell's been dealing with some issues also too with his injury and some other stuff. Um, you know, we've got, you know, deshawn has got a little knee injury. And so, you know, the Knicks and Knacks for us has been kind of hurting us all year also too, which also hasn't been helping our cause. Um, <clears throat> and so we're trying to hopefully we can get healthy. Uh, so we're gonna take it today off um, and try to focus on academics. And then we'll get back to it again on Tuesday. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we got to be able to really hit film and then hit the floor and understand what it is, our game plan going into it. Very similar to what it was last time that we played them coming into here is we got off of a high of getting two buzzer beater wins down there in Arkansas. And then we came in and then we had another buzzer beater game with, with, uh, with, with Columbia at home that they just had the ball and Tony hit a big shot. It's going to be another battle. It's going to be another task. Um, and, and, and for us, we're just mentally trying to Make sure that we keep sharp and we got to be able to shoot the ball a little bit better. I, you know, I thought from the field we shot the ball well, but from three we didn't shoot the ball very well. We wasn't very fast. Um, but I, that was a lot of due credit to CBC and Willie Bat because they stopped us from being fast. And so this week is just the managing the health and managing what we need to get done. And hopefully we can try to put together a big game for Columbia. Yeah, Columbia on Saturday. What's it going to take for you guys to win it? Uh, hope that uh, Colin Parker and Tony don't show up. <laughs> Other than that, what else? <laughs> Game plan, right there, right? Uh, no, I mean, you know, we're, we're going to have to manage those two guys. I mean, those two guys, I think, have probably been the most consistent players in the league um, outside of a handful of other guys all year. Um, then we're going to have to handle uh, playing at Columbia. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a tall hard. task. Yeah. You know, it's going to be Sherman Williams night for them. Uh, we all know what the game's about. Uh, regardless of how bad we are or how good they are or vice versa, from last year, it's still going to be a high marquee game, and uh, we're going to have to go in there and, and do what we did last year: is take it to them. We're going to, if you're going to beat Columbia at Columbia, you got to beat Columbia at Columbia. Um, I think that's what's so impressed by what Lion did is they shot way more free throws than what they did. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get that necessarily on that, um, but they go over there and they shoot like 22 free throws, and Columbia shot eight, and that's going to have to be. We're going to box out, rebound, contain the basketball, and control the boards and control the physicality of the game because it's going to be a physical game. And uh, we'll have to see if we can't go over there, make some shots and put some pressure on them. Sounds good. Make them guard. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Preston Ingram is the men's head basketball coach here at Missouri Baptist. We'll be right back with Sam Pearson, the women's head coach, in just a moment. Welcome back to the Coaches Show. That's Sam Pearson. I'm Joel Divick and Sam. Uh, the good times just keep rolling for you guys. Uh, now yeah. it's 10 win in, wins in a row. You're 17 and three. It's the best start for women's basketball at Missouri Baptist in a long time, probably probably ever. Yeah. As far as back as we go, go back in the record books. Yeah. Two wins against uh, the Baptist schools from Arkansas. Talk about that week that you guys had last week. Yeah, man, a uh, heck of a week for us, man. Heck of a week for us. Uh, we, we had spent, uh, I think, four games on the road prior to that. Uh, so, man, it felt good getting back uh, here at the Petty in front of our fans. Man, the fans Thursday night were electric. Men's team was, was over there, man, just losing their minds, man. It was, it was, a, it was a great night, uh, and we fed off that energy. Shot the ball extremely well, shared it well, guarded it well. Probably Thursday night, uh, CBC was probably 
uh, one of the most complete games that we've played all season. You know, I was, man, I had nothing, I had not many negative things to say, you know, man. So, so hats off to our group, you know, locking back in, taking care of home court Thursday and then on the Saturday, man, against John Mayberry's heck of a coach, had them ready to play early on. Um, you know, and it, and it took us a while to find our rhythm. You know, we couldn't uh, couldn't get out and transition. You know how we how we typically do. Uh, you know, wasn't able to play with that pace of pay, pace of play that we uh, that we tend to play with. You know, so it was a uh, it was challenging early on, man. But we had an explosion second half. You know, and was able to uh, to take care of business Saturday, man. So any win in the conference is a good win, man. But it it feels really good to be able to protect uh, home court for us. Absolutely, and. Um... We talked about Casey Rice last week. She was your leading scorer in a couple of those games. And um, Tiani Taylor, you know, she's always someone who can go off. She had yeah. a career high against Cotty a few weeks ago yeah. for 30. And uh, now it's Bryce Dow who comes off the bench. Yeah. And uh, in the past, you've called her a microwave. I think for you guys <laughs> last week, she was a bit of a convection oven. She yeah. was hot the whole time. <laughs> That's right. You know? Man, so. man, hot. To, hey, the thing about her, man, she scores the heck out of the basketball. You know what I mean? She Her confidence is through the roof. Uh, and when she's rolling, she's really, really rolling. You know, so like you said, she's on a hot streak right now. Uh, not really turning it down. She's just staying heated up, you know, and, and I'm gonna try, I'm gonna keep riding that as long as possible. You know, put her in those areas to, uh, to attack the opposing uh, uh, defenders. Uh, you know, put her in some ball screen actions, run some stagger aways for her, try to get her some good looks, you know, get some clean looks. And not just uh, not just plays where she has to work for herself, you know, but she does that well, man, scoring off the bounce, attacking one-on-one -on -one defenders, uh, you know, man, but she's she's scoring the heck out of the basketball right now. And it feels good to be able to, be able to bring that spark off the bench. Like you said, Tiani Taylor, Casey Rice, score the heck out of it. But then we bring somebody off the bench who is just as good, if not a better of a score, you know, man. And it, and it makes for a makes for a lot of depth, you know, it makes for uh, a tough outing for opposing defenses, um, you know. And uh, and again, I'm going to just try to continue to ride the momentum, you know, put them in positions to be successful, you know, and ultimately, you know, ultimately the players make the plays, you know. I try to draw it up. I try to give them uh, tips and pointers on the areas that they can be uh, most efficient, you know, but they go out there and they make plays, man, you know, so they make my job easy at times. Right. Yep. Uh, do you think that, you know, her being, uh, Bryce, being someone that comes off the bench, do you think that, like, really aids in her just n having no pressure? Do you think that, like, you know, with Casey and Tiani, like, they're expected to, like, you know, do a bit more, maybe, like, in terms of defensively. Yeah. With Bryce, she just comes in, she's just looking to, you know, get her bucket. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's it, man. And I try to, I want them to play free. You know, I want them to play their game. I want them to be the best version of themselves. You know, I don't want any of them to have pressure. The pressure should be on me, you know. The pressure's on me to put them in the areas to be successful. You know, all I want them to do is just be them, you know, and, and they're able to do that, you know. Tiani Taylor's one of the uh, one of the best in the country, you know, at scoring it, at guarding it, at distributing it. Lauren Ebert is coming along, shooting the cover off of it. Casey Rice, one of the best stretch fours, especially in the conference. Uh, Bryce Dow bringing that tempo off the bench, you know, bringing that change of pace, but a scoring mentality. Point guard's been handling the heck out of it. Nia Ford and, and Deanna Dot, uh, and our bigs are are, are 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 handling their business, making easy ones, making bunnies, hitting free throws, defending the paint. You know, so all I ask for them is just to be the best version of themselves, and they've been doing that, man. And that's why we're really rolling, guarding the heck out of it, putting up 80 plus a game. You know, man, we're playing, we're hitting on all cylinders, man. We're playing good basketball. Um, you know, but I want to, I want to, uh, you know, I want to remain humble, you know, because it ain't, it hasn't always been like this, you know, 17 and three, man, you yeah. know, there was, there was, there was a, a time, you know, a couple of years ago where we're scratching for wins, you know, or we'll lose to one of the top teams in the conference by less than 15. And that's a win almost mm -hmm. a moral victory, you know, and, and, and and times have changed a bit, you know, so we're going to stay humble. We're going to stay hungry and continue to take this thing one game at a time try to put ourselves in the best position uh, in preparation uh, to, to go out and get victories, man. Continue to continue to ride this momentum. Right. And in terms of putting yourselves in the best position for the end of the season where you want to be, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which is hosting the, the conference tournament, um, not much needs to be said about this week. It's yeah. a rivalry. It's a team that got one over on you when right. they played here uh, back in December. It's Columbia College. 
Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Number one and number two, baby. Right. Number yeah. one and number two, man. This is uh, this is what it's all about right here. You mm -hmm. know, they came into our place, like you said, back in December, punched us right in the mouth, man. Kicked our butts. Uh, I think the score actually looks closer than what it was, man. They dominated us, um, you know. But I think that that uh, we needed that we needed that loss, you know. That loss uh, humbled us. That loss told us that we weren't ready uh, to be the to be the top just yet, you know. And even though we're number one in the rankings, uh, in my eyes, to be the best, you have to beat the best, you know. And we haven't beat the number two team yet, so we got to beat them. Uh, you know, we got to play our best basketball. I think that we're playing uh, night and day better than what we were a couple of months ago. Uh, you know, but man, that team right there is stout, man. They're, they're 10, 11 deep, shoot the cover off the basketball, rebound the heck out of it, man. They got Mallory Shedley, they can throw it in and, and is a matchup nightmare one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Abby Back is probably one of the point, best point guards in the country, man. They, like I said, they, they shoot it all five positions, man. They're a tough team and playing, at Columbia is even tougher, man. I was going to say, know. you go to the Southwell and it, it's yeah. tough. Oh, um, it's challenging, man. I mean, they they have such an alumni base. Uh, they're so well connected. Uh, a lot of boosters, you know, et cetera, who are really invested into the into the university. Um, so it makes for an electric atmosphere almost. You know, they're going to be rooting against us, you know, and they're going to be overly hyped for their, uh, you know, for their successes, man. But, you know, we're just going to stay to the grind, one possession at a time. Uh, you know, see if we can make every possession tough, challenge every catch. Good players are going to make tough shots, you know. So as long as we make every possession tough, uh, you know, we're able to rebound the basketball, we're able to share it offensively. Uh, and play our brand of basketball. I thought that we got away from that first time we played them, you know, but if we're able to play our brand of basketball, you know, may the best man win, man, but it's going to be, man, it's going to be a nail biter, back to back battle, man, against two of the top teams in the American Midwest Conference, man. Absolutely. So we're excited. One versus two this week, and um, not that we want to look ahead, you know, you always say one game at a time, but yeah. after this uh, week and the game against Columbia, there's five games remaining. And at the end of the schedule, we see number one seed hosts, quarterfinals, semifinals, yeah. and the final yeah. of the AMC Women's Basketball Championship. Yeah. What kind of, uh, what, what are you trying to do to like temper expectations and make sure that this team is taking it week by week, game by game? Yeah, well, well, uh, uh, host the conference tournament has been our only goal this year. Uh, and that's set back in the preseason. You know, all we have, all our only goal is to host the conference tournament. You know, that means we took care of the opponents we were supposed to, uh, won the games that we were supposed to, especially on the road, um, you know, and, be, and came together to be the team that we know we can be. Uh, now, we've put ourselves in that position up to this point. But like you said, we can't look too far ahead, man. We have a bear in Columbia College right in front of us. We have a three-game week come next week, you know, and then uh, Harris, Stowe, and Cotty, who played us tough, you know, to finish off the year. So, man, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that's a couple of weeks away. You know, uh, we're going to do what we need to do on the day-to-day. -day. We still got three more days before we play Columbia. You know, three more days to get better. Uh, three more days to get a lot of mental reps, uh, to get some better conditioning. Um, you know, so we're just going to take it one day at a time. Uh, that has been the ultimate goal from day one. Um, it feels good to even be in consideration, you know, for hosting a conference tournament. But I've made it a point to not talk to any administration about it, you know, any of our scheduling, any of our planning, planning practices and Making teams. it tough on our part. Yeah, I'm right? making it tough <laughs> on y'all, man, but I don't want to jinx myself. You know, again, I uh, I want to enjoy this moment right now, you yeah. know, because I haven't I've never been like here, man. Yeah. You know, I've never been in this in this type of area, man. We've uh, man, we've built the uh, we, we planted the roots, you know, five years ago, man. They're really blossoming now, you know, mm -hmm. so I want to enjoy it a little bit, um, you know, and then and then, you know, come next week, week after. When it's really time to start preparing for this conference tournament, you know, whether we're able to host, God willing, uh, you know, or we're traveling, man, I think that we're going to be ready. All right, Sam, uh, best of luck. We yeah. appreciate the time. Appreciate it. Before we sign it off, um, I know we had pressing, um, you know, kind of make that like plea to the fans. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a tough drive, Spartan Nation. That's but, right. Um, 
Columbia, it's a lot closer than any of the Arkansas schools, and it's it's one versus two. Coach, yeah. do you want to make the uh, uh, throw the gauntlet to the Spartan fans? To you know, we want to see you in Como. And yeah, bring come noise. on out, man. Come on out to Como. It's a Saturday afternoon. Uh, you leave at 11 o'clock. You'll be back uh, by by five or six after the men's game, man. Come out, come check us both out. Number one and number two on the women's side. Number one and number three on the men's side. Uh, and and. They traveled, they traveled well here to St. Louis, man. They brought a lot of fans from Columbia down here, and their teams really rolled that energy and, and, and came out with a couple of victories uh, here at our place, man. So we're looking forward to the challenge uh, on, at Columbia here on the 4th. Um, come on out, Spartan fans, man. We'll really appreciate it. Uh, and, and, and worst case, we appreciate your support watching in, you know, from afar, man. So go Spartans, baby, shine on. Shine on. All righty, that'll do it for the MBU Basketball Coaches Show. To keep it tuned to MBUSpartans.com for everything men's basketball and women's basketball. We'll see you next week for the MBU Basketball Coaches Show on the Spartan Digital Network.